U.S. President Joe Biden has unveiled a plan to allow humanitarian aid deliveries into the Gaza Strip through Egypt. Israel has confirmed a limited number of trucks will be allowed into the besieged territory beginning on Friday. Israel has launched airstrikes against Gaza and sealed off the territory from supplies since Hamas militants entered Israel two weeks ago and killed at least 1,400 people. The U.N. says more than 3,000 people have been killed in Gaza since then. Lines of trucks containing aid for Gaza, stretching as far as the eye can see. The truck drivers are waiting and praying to pass through Rafah border crossing. Israel's announcement that it will not stop aid entering Gaza could be the key to unlocking the border's gates. And it will be sorely needed. On the other side of the border in the town of Rafah, fuel is in very short supply. Gazans have no gas or electricity to cook, so they're using wood-burning ovens of commercial bakeries to make bread instead. No electricity, no gas and no fuel. The situation is very hard and there's no wood. I have no idea how the owner of the bakery managed to get wood. It's the only place where we can bake bread. We've gone back in time. Meanwhile, on the road leading from southern Gaza Strip to the north, there are physical reminders of airstrikes everywhere, buildings flattened and reduced to rubble. The road leads to Gaza City and the scene of what has become a hotly disputed event, the blast at Al-Ahli Arab Hospital. Hamas officials say it was the result of an Israeli airstrike. Israel says it was caused by a rocket from Palestinian militants that misfired. No matter who was responsible, the explosion has left Gazans angry at Israel and in fear. I'm afraid that they will bomb hospitals. This is very far from mercy and humanity. They are the enemy. This was the scene near Gaza City's port area. A three-storey building destroyed in an airstrike. Witnesses said the blast killed 40 people from one extended family who lived here or trapped them under rubble. It's a reminder of what has become daily routine for Gazans. The search for the dead and the lucky survivors. Let's cross over to Gaza now. Hazem Belusha is a journalist. He joins us now on the phone from there. Hazem, what are you hearing about aid deliveries being allowed through the Rafah crossing into Gaza? Well, um, up to now, except to uh, statements, nothing uh, got into Gaza. There are a lot of statements from uh, whether from Egyptian side or Egypt, uh, American side as well as the Israeli government statement that they wouldn't allow for uh, aid to come from Israel, but they wouldn't stop the the, um, the aid that comes to uh, southern Gaza Strip from Egypt. Um, up to now, I checked with the officials in Gaza, nothing has been um, uh, delivered or crossed into Gaza uh, uh, Strip. Okay, so nothing is moving yet. How badly are the current shortages in Gaza hitting those around you? It is it is very hard and very tough. Uh, it's getting harder day by day. Um, there is a very limited um, uh, uh, access to water. Um, uh, drinking water is is like uh, it's um, uh, very very hard to get. And um, no uh, no electricity at all. Uh, sometimes people are queuing at the, some places like pharmacies or grocery shops who have uh, um, uh, the solar panels to. So they charge their their mobile phones or their equipment. There is like long queues at the bakeries. As one of the bakeries in my area, like in Osara camp, was bombed last night or the night before, actually. Um, um, and, and it's uh, food is is very limited because the movement of the trucks is very hard from different from city to another. Um, but we are talking about, according to the official number, about uh, one million at least. Um, uh, had been displaced uh, from their homes to different areas with uh, very limited access. Uh, many people are staying at UNRWA facilities and they barely get some, some, some food and some help from the, uh, the UNRWA uh, 
Mm. Hasim, I, I wanted to ask you about that explosion at a hospital in Gaza City that's drawn global attention. Uh, how are Gazans reacting to that? Hazem, are you still with us? I believe we've lost the line to Hazem. That was uh, journalist Hazem Balusha speaking to us in Gaza. He's a journalist based there and has been providing us uh, with reporting. Well, we uh, also have a team in Jerusalem, in, uh, also in Tel Aviv. Our correspondent, Rebecca Ritters, is in Jerusalem right now. Uh, Rebecca, President Biden, U.S. President Joe Biden, says some humanitarian aid will be delivered to Gaza through the Rafah border on Friday. But explain to us, why has Israel so far been so reluctant to allow aid into Gaza? Well, there are several reasons, Terry. One being that Israel is really just focused on its uh, war aims of trying to completely destroy the Hamas organisation, its military capabilities, and that has been its main focus. Uh, the, they're also using this siege. We know that very, very early on, I think it was the second or, or, the second or third day, they announced this siege on Gaza <clears throat> that they would... There would be no food, fuel, uh, electricity would be cut, uh, there would be no uh, water, that everything would be cut and nothing would go into Gaza. And they're using that also uh, as one of their tactics. Now, concerns about getting aid in have also been spoken about. You know, people are worried that the aid, <coughs> people in Israel, excuse me, <coughs> are worried that the aid will get into the wrong hands, that it will actually get to, to the Hamas militants. And there's concerns also uh, from the Israelis that there could be things other than aid inside those trucks, perhaps weapons, perhaps a possibility to rearm or to resupply some Hamas militants. So those concerns have definitely been uh, spoken about from the Israelis. Now, what's changed right. now is that President Biden visited yesterday and he really pushed for some aid to be allowed and the Israelis have relented. Benjamin Netanyahu is saying that he will no longer block aid from coming in, but it is thought that there'll be an initial uh, small tranche of trucks that will be allowed over some 20 or so. There are around 200 now amassing at that Rafa crossing, uh, waiting to go in, as we heard in that report. But an initial uh, tranche of 20 or so will go in and the process will be uh, witnessed. They'll be, we'll be seeing where the aid is going, whether it's distributed correctly according to Israel and then whether or not they'll allow more to go through. It's thought that that should happen uh, as soon as tomorrow, but time is of the essence, as you heard from Hazem there. What are the conditions, Rebecca, for those aid deliveries, at least for these initial 20 trucks that are going to be allowed into Gaza, apparently? Well, incredibly difficult, and that is part of the reason for the hold-up, part of the reason why it's not happening straight away. Obviously, everything is being inspected in, in the trucks, as we're hearing, but also that the conditions on the Gazan side are particularly difficult. That area around the Rafa crossing hasn't been spared airstrikes, and they're trying to work to try and fill some of the potholes, some of the, the damage that has been done to the road on the Gazan side in order for those trucks to be able to pass. Now, the uh, hospital blast in Gaza City that's drawn so much attention, it's sparked more anger and fear in the Gaza Strip itself. Uh, Israel claims it was not behind the blast. Is there any independent investigation underway, Rebecca, to determine what actually happened at that hospital? As you can imagine, Terry, the conditions to allow for an independent investigation are incredibly difficult. Investigators are not able to access, certainly not able to get into Gaza and certainly not able to get to the site. So investigations are underway. There are many independent investigations, also journalists looking at the available data uh, that we that we have. There is video, there's video of the of the the, bo the bombing and and, and other evidence and. and People are trying to independently verify that. The UK uh, says that it's going to carry out an independent investigation. The UN and many other countries are calling for such an independent investigation. But so far, there's been no outcome uh, officially from any independent investigations, and, and that will be ongoing. Rebecca, thank you very much for now. DW's Rebecca Ritters in Jerusalem.